I'm super excited to be able to extend our carbohydrate series to this third video. And today we're gonna talk all about increasing your ability to use carbs better. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm so excited you're here. For those of you who are new, my name is Jessica Ash. I'm a functional nutritionist and just a general hormone nerd. I love to connect biological truths with your physiology so you can really understand your metabolism better and actually take some big action steps to improve your quality of life. Because it's so important for me that you understand your body and you're empowered by your body. Remember that everything I talk about on both my Instagram and my YouTube is just an extension of what I teach in my online course, Fully Nourished, which is kind of like a blueprint I created on restoring your metabolism and balancing your hormones using nutrition. So make sure to check that out in the link below. I also have tons of free information, you know, free trainings and free guides, which are usually linked below. So make sure to check those out if you're like, hey, I want more, but I'm not exactly sure if I want to do a paid course yet. Totally understand there's more for you in the links below. So today as we talk about increasing your ability to use carbohydrates and supporting blood sugar balance, I want you to remember that all of this should be seen in the context of your metabolic markers. Now we've talked about metabolic markers in videos before. If you're a student of mine, you know I talk about metabolic markers a lot. If you've watched a few of my videos, you know I've talked about metabolic markers before. Your metabolic markers are really what you use to assess health. So a lot of people use only one thing to assess their health and that is weight. But that is not the thing that we should be using. We need to be using our energy and our sleep and our hunger levels, aka our appetite. We should be using our digestion and our mood. You know, our body temperature and our pulse can be great indicators. And then for people who are super hyper concerned with their blood sugar, you can obviously add in your blood sugar readings into these metabolic markers as well. Just remember that blood sugar readings are gonna take some time to shift and you can't be making every single decision based on just that blood sugar reading. Like, oh no, my blood sugar reading's high, so therefore I should do something else, you know? It's like you're looking more for long-term patterns. And just like women, you know, we track our cycles, we track our ovulation. We know that this cycle is gonna affect next cycle and the things we do in the next cycle are gonna affect the next cycle and so on and so forth. And so remember, the body is really good at responding to the tools it's given and also the environment it's given. And it's gonna take some time to shift things around to respond to the, that information in that environment. So just kind of keep that one in mind. But you know, today we're gonna talk about some actual action steps to increase our ability to use carbs and, and kind of some trouble shoots as well because if you've watched the last two videos in this little mini carb series you know that if you've been implementing all those things that we've already talked about and you are a fully nourished student or you've been implementing things that you see me talk about on Instagram and you're like something's just not quite right I'm not able to utilize carbohydrates well or carbs are still kind of making me feel icky this video is for you and these are some more like obscure things or some reminders that might not be as obvious to you. You know, some of the things I talked about before in other videos was like start slow and start with a small amount of carbohydrates and start with a different type of carbohydrate and all that kind of stuff. But if you're like, yeah, I'm already doing that and I'm just not seeing what I wanna see, these tips might help you kind of like have some aha moments. So the first thing I wanna talk about is actually meal density. When it comes to carbohydrates and just overall better blood sugar balance. I think this is important because, you know, we're talking about carbohydrates in this series, but it's really about creating stability and balance. And if you watch that free blood sugar training I made for you guys called Creating Balance, you probably understand that balance is more important and stability is more important and safety is more important to the body than just one thing. You know, one thing is not gonna cause an overall imbalance. It's usually this general um, combination of different stressors that is finally snowballing to to impact the body's overall balance. And so meal density is actually one of those things that can impact our body's ability to balance itself out. And if you're like, wait, wait what the heck is meal density? Um, I'm talking about like, you know, heavier meals, denser meals that feel really nourishing and satisfying, 
versus these like lighter meals that are maybe liquid meals or powder meals. Um, those would be like on the far end of the light spectrum. And then like a heavy dense meal would be on the, the heavy spectrum. And you know that there are many meals in between. So I'll give you some examples. Light foods would be like juices and milk, lighter fruits like maybe grapes, um, jams, jellies, liquid sugars like honey and maple syrup, and then powders like, you know, gelatin and collagen and protein powders. These are what I would consider light foods. These are, they, they still provide nourishment, but they're gonna be on the lighter side and they're gonna have a different impact on blood sugar than let's say some like medium density foods like denser fruits like melons and tropical fruits like papaya um, or on the protein side like eggs and dairy like yogurt and cheese or maybe like some dried meat like beef jerky and then like white fish and certain shellfishes are also going to be a little bit lighter you know they don't feel super heavy in your stomach but they're not quite like as light as liquid like a smoothie and then we have these like denser meals like root vegetables and grains and solid meats like, you know, steak, beef, um, chicken, pork, organ meats, um, fattier fish, those types of things. Those things that really make you feel like heavier and satiated um, and maybe don't sound super good when you don't have a big appetite. But meal density matters. And I think a lot of people who are still struggling with blood sugar imbalances are maybe not paying attention to the density of their meals. They're maybe consuming a lot more like light foods or maybe even like moderately dense foods, like lots of cheese and yogurt and things like that. And maybe it like they, they feel fine and so they keep doing it, but maybe they need to opt for some denser foods or they need to be more conscious of combining their lighter meals with some heavier, or their lighter foods with some heavier foods to create a more dense and blood sugar supportive meal. So if you're somebody that's still struggling with carbohydrate intolerance, or you're like, I'm just really not tolerating carbs well, and you are doing some a lot of light meals or a lot of kind of like medium to light meals, I highly recommend putting at least three denser meals into your day and combining some of your lighter foods with some denser, especially denser proteins and denser carbs, like root vegetables, um, potatoes, even some like rices, um, or, or um, heartier grains like buckwheat and things, um, and then like some denser proteins, and just see how those impact you. You might find that you're feeling overall balanced after a few days of doing that. You might feel like, oh wow, I'm feeling a lot more like just, the word balanced comes to mind, but it's more like steady and not so all over the place. And this can be a sign that, you know what, you need to be focusing a little bit more on what types of food your body res is responding to well and sticking to foods that you actually have to chew. So that's what I like to say is if, if it's a food that you have to sit down and cut with a knife and a fork and you have to actually sit there and actively chew it, if you're feeling better with those types of meals, then you should probably make most of your meals and snacks those types of meals and stop relying so heavily on easy things like you know, snacky type foods or smoothies or milk or things like that. And that doesn't mean those foods are bad, doesn't mean you can't consume those foods, but you might actually have to combine those lighter foods with some denser foods and make that a whole meal rather than having some lighter meals and denser meals. You might need to make all your meals and snacks a little bit on the denser side. So keep meal density in mind. I think it's really important factor that a lot of people are overlooking when they're trying to tolerate carbohydrates again. And they're really excited about eating things like honey and maple syrup, which I think are, you know, super fun foods, but not always that great for you if you're not responding to them well. So meal density is my first tip for you. The second one is finding your correct protein to carb balance. So this goes a little bit, I guess it kind of goes into the last one, but it's its own. I think it's important to kind of like <laughs> have, have it be its own thing because many people are mistakenly eating more proteins than they are carbs. And I'm talking on a meal by meal basis. So not your overall macro balance during the day, but actually when you sit down and eat a meal, a lot of times women are mistakenly thinking that eating more protein than carbs is good for them. And so they're eating like a good amount of protein and they're kind of skimping on the carbs. When in reality, protein actually impacts insulin 
more than carbohydrates do, which is why protein is such a good macronutrient for lowering blood sugar. It stimulates the release of insulin and then that insulin helps that glucose get into the cells. But the problem is, is when you have too much protein without enough carbohydrates, remember, you know, they work in balance with one another, carbs, raise, protein lowers. When you when you actually have too much protein, you're gonna find your blood sugar is actually dropping too low. And if you don't have enough carbs, you're gonna find immediately after a meal you're craving carbs because your body's trying to get blood sugar back up. And if you don't consume those carbs that you're craving, then your body's gonna actually have to manufacture that glucose. And it's going to have to manufacture it using cortisol and adrenaline and all these stress hormones and mineral spending hormones, we can call them, or mineral corticoids that we don't want to, to make us glucose. We wanna be consuming that instead. And so the easy fix for this is to make sure you're eating enough carbs at your meals. And the ratios might surprise you. Many women actually need to be eating, you know, for every one gram of protein, they need to be having two grams of carbohydrates. Some women actually need to be having you know, for every one gram of protein, they're eating three grams of carbohydrates. And for some women, they actually thrive on having, uh, for every one gram of protein they're consuming, having four grams of carbohydrates. And for some of you, you might be like, wow, that's a lot of carbs. But what happens is many women who are using carbs really well or need that energy, they are, they are constantly fighting these low dips because they're having too much protein in relationship to their carbs. So if this is you and you're like, I am not nailing my blood sugar, or I'm still not feeling really great, or I'm doing all the right things, I feel like I'm eating enough protein and I'm getting the right types of fats and I'm doing all the things, but for whatever reason I'm not feeling good, you might just have an improper ratio of protein to carbs. So maybe experience with that one to two ratio or one to three ratio or one to four ratio, depending on where you are now. And you know, if what you're doing now is not working for you, maybe try something different. And remember, it's really about preventing these swings low. Because like I talk about in my free blood sugar training, creating balance, what goes down must come up because if our blood sugar dropped too low, we would die and our body knows that. And so our body does anything it needs to do to get blood sugar back up. And a lot of people demonize high blood sugar, but they forget that low blood sugar equals death. And so, <laughs> And so our body is constantly fighting to get out of these super low swings. And so a lot of women don't realize they're causing high swings by actually having low swings at first or before that. And so remember, what goes low must go high. And I highly recommend finding the proper balance between protein and carbohydrate. The third thing that we can do to really tolerate carbohydrates better is strength train or lift heavy weights or lift our body weight. Now, a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah, I know I need to exercise, but no, high intensity interval training and cardio do not do the same thing as slow and steady strength training. And the reason for this is our muscles, they have an affinity or they really like free fatty acids. And if you caught my past couple carb videos, you know that when there's too many free fatty acids in the bloodstream, the cells do not respond to insulin well, therefore we call this insulin resistance, right? The, the cells are actually choosing to not respond to insulin so that they can take up these free fatty acids. And so when we have a lot of free fatty acids in the bloodstream, we might experience blood glucose issues. And so muscles love to take up those free fatty acids, leaving room for the cells to take up insulin and blood glucose. And so what are the biggest muscles on your body? Well, that's gonna be your legs, your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, your leg muscles can work for you. And then the second largest muscle group that you wanna keep in mind is your back, your back muscles, you know, your lats and your traps. All of the, all those, those back muscles can be working for you all day long to take up free fatty acids. And so when we work really hard to build these muscles, not only are we using up those free fatty acids as we're working out and creating better blood sugar balance just by working out, but actually over time, as we build more and more muscle, those muscles also work for us while we're at rest. They don't just work for us when we are exercising, which is the difference between strength training and muscle building and something like cardio or high intensity interval training. And I'm not saying that those 
modalities, those exercise modalities don't have their time and their place. But when you are trying to get better insulin sensitivity and you want your body using glucose better, strength training is where it's at. And this won't only change the aesthetics of your body because you're building muscle, but it will also impact the way your body opens up the fat cells, takes up what's in those fat cells, and then also what your body's doing with both glucose and free fatty acids. So the biggest tool you have in your arsenal is strength training, especially building up those glutes and those hammies and those quads. And it's a really, really good idea to be strength training if you're trying to use carbohydrates better and you are able to strength train. And then the fourth thing to remember when you're going through all this process is don't give up and give it time. A lot of people don't even know or are not even aware that their body isn't using glucose very well until they, you know, are slapped with a diagnosis of insulin resistance or are told they have PCOS or hormone issues. But I talk about this in my creating balanced blood sugar training. It's often years and years of these highs and lows, the body's swinging from one end to the other and constantly having to try to create balance before eventually it just can't do it anymore. It's compensated so much and it's tried to do what it can with what it's been given, but it hasn't been given enough and it doesn't have the resources anymore. And so that that's when you really start to see the breakdown occur, but it's been happening for years. And so remember that something that has been happening or unfolding for years and years and years and years and years is not going to be fixed overnight. And if you get too caught up in the numbers, you get too caught up in like the blood sugar readings and you get too caught up in like, oh no, my temps are high and oh no, my temps are low. Or even if you get too caught up in the symptoms of, you know, oh, my energy was good yesterday and now it's not great today. Remember that you have to give your body space and time. It learned how to do without for so long that now it needs to actually relearn how to do with. And if you expect these changes to happen overnight, you're going to actually cause more stress on yourself because you're going to feel like there's something wrong with you. And you're also going to constantly feel like you're doing something wrong. And remember that fear is going to keep you in that fight or flight nervous system state, which is usually where the hormones like cortisol, and adrenaline are going to be released constantly and you want to be pushing yourself from that sympathetic state to that parasympathetic state that place where your body feels safe enough to rest and digest and so just remember like remind yourself I'm taking these steps I'm nourishing my body I'm doing these things day in and day out and my body is safe my body is cared for my body is nourished my body is this and just keep reminding yourself of that because when you say it and when you think it your body's going going to believe it. If you keep saying like, I'm broken and I'm not, you know, nothing's going to change and I'm never going to get better. Your body's going to believe that too. So I just want to remind you to be consistent and give it time. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither are you. And you have a lot of places you want to go. I understand. And it's just going to take some time to get there. And it's about one baby foot in front of the other. Remember that really tiny changes will build up over time to create these very large visible changes but oftentimes from day to day those tiny changes are not really visible and it can be a good you know if you're one of those people that needs to keep track of things it's a good idea to maybe snap a picture of yourself once a month or maybe take some measurements once a month or write in a journal just how you're doing once a month so that you don't have what I call healing amnesia where you never feel like you're getting better because you forget how bad it was before and I see a lot of people go through this they're like oh I'm never gonna feel better and then I'm like well weren't you like not sleeping and now you're sleeping good and they're like well yeah yeah you're right you're right I am but I'm never gonna get better and it's like you have to have something to remind yourself how far you've come and that means you're gonna continue to to go far in the future so be consistent don't give up and you know experiment to a point but then don't make such big changes all the time that you don't even know what's working and what's not working sometimes it's just about consistency and time but if you are somebody and I know that there are a lot of you out here out there that are like this that just loves to eat up all the content and you know soak up all my free Instagram content and YouTube content and you just implement things kind of as you learn them that's great but if you feel like you're hitting a wall it's sometimes a really good idea to invest in something that's going to give you structure 
So whether that be my course, Fully Nourished, or somebody else in this community's course, because there's so many um, like courses and programs and you know one-on-one -on -one support, you know anything to kind of serve your needs, it is a good idea to at some point say, you know what, I'm only getting so far on my own and now it's time to have a little bit more structure in my life and a little bit more direction. That's why I created Fully Nourished um, and that's why I wanted it to be a really like a full blueprint to give you like the total overview so you knew exactly what you needed to do. But some of you might just need to give it time and do some small tweaks like we talked about in today's video. And so I hope that today's video gave you some aha moments. And you're like, you know what? I'm gonna experiment with some meal density and pay attention to that. And I'm gonna also look at my carbohydrate to protein ratio and look at that. That is all good and I'm so excited that you've had that moment and you can focus on those details a little bit more thoroughly. Stay nourished and I'll see you in next week's video.